Welcome to this short video on galaxies. And I want to take this, this time to basically have a look at the differences between spiral galaxies and elliptical galaxies. So if we're not familiar with what a galaxy actually is, these are very large structures that contain hundreds of billions of stars generally, and they're made up of stars, dust, gas, and I suppose we should include dark matter there really. These are very large structures and they contain a lot of matter really. There's a variety of different galaxies that there are. Some of them are easy to spot, some of them may be not so obvious. So what are the main differences between these types of galaxies? Well, here we've got a few different types. So we've got barred spiral, normal spiral. They're basically the same, except the barred spiral has a bar in its center, as opposed to a more kind of spherical looking um, central core or bulge. You then have these irregular ones. These are formed when you have it, galaxies interacting. So these may be from galaxies that are colliding or merging, and they have very irregular shapes, hence their name. Some of them are undergoing large amounts of star formation because the gas gets compressed and it forces stars to form. And then you have the ellipticals. So the ellipticals have very little gas. They are featureless. They don't have those spiral arms. So they are basically elliptical, is how they look. And then you have lenticular, which are in between the spirals and ellipticals. They have features that correspond to both, really. They kind of sit in between. But the ones we're interested in, just for this short video, is the spirals and the ellipticals. And what are the main differences between the two? So if we go to the galaxy tuning fork diagram, which shows the different types and classifications of galaxies, it's also quite useful for looking at the evolution as well. So on the right hand side of the tuning fork, you have your spiral galaxies. And depending if it's a normal spiral, a barred spiral, intermediate, that's where the different paths come from, the different parts of the fork. So what happens here is they actually evolve from the right to the left. So the younger ones are right on the right hand side and your old spiral galaxies are more towards the center across to the left of the spiral path. And it should be fairly obvious, really. They have spiral arms. That's what makes them stand out. That's why they're called spiral galaxies. But also, as they age, these spiral arms become more tightly wound. So as they age, these spiral arms get tighter. And a few other things happen as well. So as they go from right to left on this diagram, you'll note that they actually get a bit tighter. Now, the ellipticals, which sit on the left-hand side of this diagram, they're mostly classified by their shape. So they can go from circular to more of like a cigar shape. And depending on where they sit on that scale, they'll be given some kind of number. And that's pretty much you know, the main classification for them. That's how we give ellipticals a, uh, you know, a, a number or a type, I suppose. It's just purely on their shape. But that could relate to how we're looking at them, the orientation as we see them when we look out into space. So one of the key differences between elliptical galaxies and spiral galaxies is star formation. So spiral galaxies, they're the galaxies that got all that gas in. The gas will collapse and form stars. So what you typically find is that in the spiral galaxies, you've got large amounts of star formation. Now, in contrast, elliptical galaxies don't have gas in them or very, very little. So therefore, they don't have any star formation. So Spiral galaxies undergoing star formation. They also have younger stars in because they're still currently forming stars. Elliptical galaxies have older stars and they don't have those new stars that have recently been formed. So they don't have that gas. It's down to their gas content basically as to why one is forming stars and one isn't. If we look a bit closer at a spiral galaxy then, we can see some of these regions where the stars are actually forming. So this is the Orion Nebula, which is in the, the white box. And you can see this with a, you know, a fairly small telescope actually yourself. And within that nebula, which is a cloud of ionized gas, you've got bright blue stars. And it's the bright blue stars that are illuminating the nebula. And if you zoom out and look at the, the overall galaxy, you can see that you've got, you can see regions of blue, kind of red purple, they're those areas of star formation because these bright blue stars are then you know, illuminating 
these clouds of gas that they sit in these nebulas. And we can see that in the galaxy themselves. So we see these bright regions of star formation. Also, as the galaxy ages, that gas will be depleted. So over time, that gas gets turned into stars and you have less and less gas in the galaxy. So therefore, star formation kind of falls off as they start to age. Another key aspect between the two, or property, is rotation. So spiral galaxies will typically have some kind of net rotation. They're rotating about a centre, a bit like a disk. Elliptical galaxies don't necessarily show that. So there isn't always a, a net rotation there. Um, the stars are moving a little bit more randomly. So dynamically, there's differences between the two. You know, they look different, but they're also not behaving the same way. So one typically rotates in a common direction or a, a bit like a disk, and the other does not. And then we have color. So the spiral galaxies, because they have these younger blue stars, they have more of them in their galaxy. The galaxy as a whole is typically bluer. So here we've got a, a nice galaxy. You can see lots of blue in it. And we've got the Pleiades there, which is a, a cluster of very young stars. You can see they're visually blue. And we'd expect to find a lot of those in the spiral arms of a spiral galaxy because that's where the stars typically form. And if there's plenty of gas there, then we're gonna get lots of stars forming. So young stars are gonna be bluer, older stars are gonna be redder. So we would find that a spiral galaxy is likely to be bluer than an elliptical galaxy. And obviously in contrast, we have elliptical galaxies. They don't have those bright regions of star formation. And because they haven't had any recent star formation, occurring there's no young stars there so it's a collection of old population stars so these stars are typically redder as stars age they they will get get redder and that means that if you have a population of stars that are all doing the same thing getting older then the whole galaxy is going to be redder so what we find is that as galaxies age they move from being bl blue to red they're not exactly blue or red but they, they are bluer or redder than one another. So we find that elliptical galaxies are redder because they have these older stars in them and there's no star formation to replenish the newer, the younger blue ones. And then just to mention the younger and older spiral galaxies. So there are differences between the two of those as well. So younger spiral galaxies are gonna have a much more open structure to their spiral arms. They're not as tightly wound. And they also have these bright regions of star formation. So we can see we've got some nice bright regions in those spiral arms where stars have been formed because they have that higher gas content. So if they've got that higher gas content, they're gonna have more stars forming. We, they will be bluer than the older type ones as well. And that's it. And then your older spiral galaxies, you'll find that the spiral arms are more tightly wound and they don't have those bright regions where you can actively see the star formation. Their gas is starting to run out. So they have very little gas content, very little star formation, but they still have a little bit probably, but just not a lot. And you can see, you can't see any bright regions there where you might see some actual star formation. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed.